Have you ever considered the possibility of something kicking up from the roadway that you're riding down and cracking your engine case? Uh, it can be very expensive, very time consuming, and could be very dangerous. I've had it happen to me, and there's a brand new product out from Traction Dynamics to prevent that. That's what we're going to talk about today. It's coming up right now. Hey everybody, welcome back to Cruise Man's Reviews. Now today we're going to talk about this new engine case guard from Traction Dynamics. And some of you may have never considered the possibility that when you're going down the highway or any road for that matter, something comes up from the road and uh, maybe the front tire kicks something up or you run over something and it kicks up and it hits the underside of your engine, your engine case, potentially causing damage could crack the engine case. Now, what Traction has come up with for the 2018 to 2022, or I should say 2018 plus, because this generation Goldwing is probably going to be around for a few more years, is they've come up with an engine case guard uh, that's kind of a unique design and looks very substantial. And we're going to take this apart and look at it first. Then we're going to take it out to the garage and install it on my 2018 Goldwing. The first thing we have is kind of a hardware kit. And let's just open it up, take a look, see what we have. Okay, so here we have a bracket. Um, this is very high quality look to it. So there's two brackets, and the idea is from the video I've seen on uh, Max's YouTube channel over at Traction. Um, this one, I believe, mounts to the front of the engine. There are three bolts on the front of the engine, two of which will be removed. This will mount to the front. There's a third bolt that just this just kind of goes over. And then on the rear of the engine, there's also three bolts, two of which we will remove and replace. Now, there's also some replacement hardware for the um, bolts that you remove from the engine case. And just to cover myself uh, legally, uh, I always give a disclaimer. You're going to be removing bolts. To install this, you'll have to remove some bolts from your engine case. Um, you do that at your own risk. So I'm not making any claims to this product at, at this point because I'm not that familiar with it yet. But I put that disclaimer on any video that requires you making any kind of changes or removing any bolts from an engine or anything like that. Uh, please understand that uh, I'm going to show you how I do it. But uh, if you choose to install anything on your motorcycle, you do so at your own risk. But, you know, Max has a good reputation in the industry. He knows uh, what he's doing. This stuff is really, really in there. It's kind of shrink wrapped on there. Ah, okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and open it and dump it out. Okay, so we've got these long bolts that will replace the engine bolts we remove. They have to be a little bit longer to allow for the thickness of the bracket. So these are going to go through and into the engine. And Max does not recommend using any sort of thread locker on here. And these are the small screws. We'll show what those do here in just a little bit. And it'll be more obvious as we install this on the bike. Okay. That's the hardware, the bracketry. Now, this, let's take a look at the plate itself. This is what's going to mount underneath the engine. And I'm just going to read from Max's email because I asked him to kind of tell me the technical specs of this thing. Excuse me while I read. This plate is 3 16 inch thick, so it's pretty thick. And it's made from 6061 T6 aluminum. I have no idea what the hell that means, but it is uh, sounds impressive. I assume that's good. Uh, with mill spec hard coat anodizing. And I got to tell you, it's very impressive looking. Uh, it does feel quite substantial. 
Uh, apparently, he has a patent pending on this. Uh, there is a little groove cut out here, a slot cut out here for something. I'm not sure which. And I uh, don't see any installation instructions, but I think he sent me some email instructions. I'm not sure. So there's three screws in the rear and four screws in the front. So it's pretty easy to tell which one's the front, which one's the rear. And this is going to basically sit underneath my engine case. Now, Max says there is a slight gap between the engine and this plate. And they did that so that the engine would not be touching this to, so there would be no vibration or, you know, harmonics or noise or anything like that. So apparently this plate also uh, sits below the exhaust headers. Just enough, just enough below. And that's going to be real important when I talk to you about another feature of this, should this do what I think it will do. It's very, very stiff. You're not going to, you're not going to bend this with your hands. This thing is thick. It's heavy duty. It looks like it would take a hell of a beating. Now, Max offers this in two different versions. There's this plate, which is the standard one. And there's another one that he calls Al, the Alcan version. And uh, I actually emailed him and I didn't know what he meant. I thought that was a type of aluminum, like Alcan. What does that mean? And it's ref a reference to the Alcan Highway, like Alaska, Canada. So if you are taking your Goldwing uh, on a lot of gravel roads or dirt roads, uh, he has another version of this protector that's a little bit wider, and I'm not sure if it's thicker. I, you'll have to look at his website and get all the details, but apparently it's a little bit more durable. But for most riders on a street bike, tour bike, this is the one you're going to want to get. If you're doing a lot of off-road, why you're doing off-road on a Goldwing, I have no idea. But if you are, because some people do ride their Goldwings to Alaska, and they go on these uh, gravel roads and they get a lot of gravel kicked up on the underside of the engine. You may want the Alcan version. So anyway, we're going to install the standard one today. Let's get to the garage. Today I'm going to show you how I installed the traction engine case guard on my 2018 Honda Goldwing. Now if you want to see a more detailed in-depth instructions on how to install this engine guard, I'm going to have a new video posted to my 2018 Plus Goldwing Maintenance Series. Check those out if you want more detail on this installation. Let's get started. Place your Goldwing on the center stand. First, we need to remove both fog light covers by removing the two 5mm screws that hold them in place. Next, we need to remove the four 5mm socket bolts that hold this front lower inner cowl in place. Now, you'll notice when you remove these that the lower bolts have a different size shoulder than the upper bolts. Now, you can simply pull the panel out and release the grommet from the boss. Now we're ready to remove the lower cowl on both sides of the engine. In this video, I'm only going to show the removal of the left lower cowl. The right lower cowl removes the same way. There's a 5mm socket bolt at the front of the lower cowl and another one at the rear of the lower cowl. The front and rear bolts are different, so make sure you note this as you remove them. Pull on the rear of the lower cowl to remove the grommet from the center of the lower cowl. Release the snap clip at the front lower corner of the lower cowl. Now begin working the panel forward slightly just so you can release that plastic hook that's on the back of the lower cowl. Remove the 8mm bolts on the left and right side of the front lower cowl to remove it. With the front lower cowl removed, we can now see the three 12mm bolts on the front of the engine. We're going to remove the one on the left and the one on the right, but not the one in the center. It's very important that you don't loosen or remove this center bolt, otherwise you may experience oil leaking from the engine case. 
Now if we take a look at the rear of the engine case, you'll see there's also three bolts. And again, we're going to remove the one on the left and the one on the right, but not the one in the center. Very important to not loosen or remove the one in the center. Now I'm back at the front of the engine and I'm using a 12 millimeter socket to remove the two 12 millimeter bolts, one on the left and the one on the right. Now this is the front bracket for installation of the traction engine guard and I'm showing you how to install it here. That hole in the center slips over that center engine bolt. But what you may not know is I'm actually installing this upside down or backward I should say. And it is possible to do this. I'm going to go ahead and show you this so that when we go to install our engine guard you'll see why it's important that you install this in the correct orientation. And until we get the plate installed, we're not going to tighten these bolts right now. Just leave it as it is. And on the front bracket, we're using the all-thread bolts that come in the kit. So I received an email from Max, and he mentioned that, that on a DCT model, there might be an issue getting to the rear drain plug because of this bracket, even though they, you can see they've kind of wallowed out some of the aluminum to give you room to get to that nut. But what he's recommending, or he recommended, that I go ahead and mount this to the rear of the plate. You can see it's the rear because it has the three holes. We know it's the right side because I'm looking at the back of the plate and it's going to go up underneath the bike like this. I'm sitting on the left side of the bike. And so I need to mount this to the plate, the rear bracket, I'm going to go ahead and mount to the plate. And then once I install this uh, whole thing, I'll install it all in one piece. And I've got three of the, the little four millimeter um, tapered screws that I'm going to put in from the bottom. And I'm just going to go ahead and mount this plate for this bracket to this plate. Okay, so what we're doing now, we're looking at the rear of the engine from underneath. This is the left side bolt we're going to remove. This is the right side bolt we're gonna remove. Our bracket will attach to those two spots using new hardware from traction these bolts right here. This bolt remains in. We do not remove this bolt. And just like the front, we always leave that one in. Do not loosen or remove it. Okay, now we're going to hold our, our plate up in place. Want to make sure you have your bolts nearby ready to go because you're holding this up with one hand. And I wouldn't want to let that plate sit, you know, with just one bolt in. Notice that the rear bracket mounting bolts from traction are the ones that have the shoulders on the bolts. And now we'll do the second one over here just to get it started. And then it should kind of hold that plate in place so we can get all of our tools ready to go. And we'll get our front screws in here in a minute. I don't want to tighten these yet because I want to leave that room so I can get my front bolts in. Now that we have our plate in position, if we go back to the front of the bike, you'll see why it's so important to mount that front back bracket properly. You can see my holes 
on the plate don't line up with the bracket. So we're going to remove this bracket and flip it around and mount it the correct way. Okay. So now when we flip this bracket around and mount it the correct way, you can see that traction has actually machined a groove in for that plug on the front of the engine, kind of give you a little more room to work with. So it should be pretty obvious which way to mount this front bracket. But like I said before, you can mount it backward, but you'll end up having to take it out and mount it like this right here. Now the holes in our plate will line up with the holes in the bracket. And on the front of the engine on this bracket, we're using the hardware provided by Traction. These are Allen head bolts. They're all thread bolts. These are not the ones that have the shoulder. Those get used in the rear. And once again, I don't want to tighten these yet. I want to leave a little bit of slop in there. Uh, it'll make it easier to put these little tapered uh, bolts in from the bottom. I'm using a four millimeter socket uh, to thread these in and then we'll come in and tighten everything with my ratchet. Be aware that the threads on this engine case guard are aluminum, so you don't need to really crank down too hard on these bolts as you tighten them. You just want them firmly tightened by hand. Now we can go ahead and tighten the bolts that hold the bracket in place. I'm going to tighten these firmly and I'll come back later with a torque wrench and torque these to Honda's spec. Okay, so we just got the traction engine guard installed, and uh, now it's time to kind of give you my thoughts on it. I'm impressed with the design and the engineering. Uh, there's a couple of unknowns right now. Uh, I was told by Max that uh, some people were having an issue getting to the rear drain plug on a DCT transmission. And he recommended that I uh, install the bracket on the plate. And then when it comes time to change the oil, I think it's that bracket that's getting in the way. And he recommended that I just basically remove those two engine bolts at the back and drop the whole plate down with the bracket on it in the back and then just undo the four tapered screws in the front. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about that yet. I'm not crazy about the idea of installing and removing engine screws on a regular basis, even though changing the oil might not be considered a regular basis. Um, so I don't know how I feel about that yet. I haven't done an oil change yet. I haven't tried to get to that rear drain bolt. What I'm going to do the next time I change my oil is I'm going to go ahead and drop that plate, taking out all the tapered screws first, just to see if I can get to the drain bolt. Uh, without removing that bracket on the back of the engine. And if I can't, then of course I'll have to remove the bracket and do it as Max suggested. And I'm not sure if they're addressing this in the future. Uh, I'm not sure if it can be addressed. I'm not sure if there's a modification that they can make to their rear bracket. Uh, but uh, So that's just something to be aware of. Uh, I don't think it's a negative necessarily. Um, you have to be comfortable with the idea of removing bolts from the engine to install this engine guard. I think the pros probably outweigh the cons. I know I have had people ask me about, does this have any impact on your warranty? Because you're removing bolts from the engine and putting bolts back in. I don't know the answer to that. That's an unknown right now. I don't suspect it would affect your warranty unless you did something really bad. Uh, I don't even know what that would be, but it, I suppose it's possible. And that's why anytime you remove or replace bolts on your engine, you need to do so with knowledge that when you do this, you do it at your own risk. I suppose there's always the possibility that could, something could screw up. But I, again, I think the pros outweigh the cons. I know that had I had a plate like this on my 2012 Goldwing, 
uh, it would not have sustained the damage that it did sustain. I'm pretty confident that this level of protection would have prevented uh, that motorcycle, the, my engine casing, from being cracked and requiring $12,000 worth of repairs. I think this, uh, this product is quite substantial. It looks uh, very durable. It looks very well engineered. I love the uh, fact that they took the time and the expense to anodize it. I think it really, you don't really see it on the bottom of the bike anyway, but I just think uh, that it's uh, an impressive piece of engineering. Now, since this plate, this engine guard, does sit below the exhaust uh, pipes, exhaust manifold, whatever, uh, it, it, it offers some interesting possibilities when it comes to the subject of using a lift on your motorcycle. Uh, it's possible that you will be able to use a lift and just ride onto this plate I don't know. I don't know how that energy is transferred to those bolts. I don't know how the energy of 800 or 900 pounds of motorcycle will affect this plate at this point. Uh, Max suggested that if you, if you put a lift in the center of it, it would probably flex, possibly even then coming into contact with the bottom of the engine, which may or may not be a bad thing. Uh, I just don't know. These are unanswered questions at this point. Of course, you could always remove the plate uh, before you use your lift. I know that in my particular case, I use a, a Torin Big Red Scissor Jack, which I normally position toward the very front of the engine case. And I'm pretty comfortable uh, with the idea that I can use this uh, to butt up against this plate toward the front of the engine, because there will be very little flex there anyway. And I'm pretty confident that that will, because uh, all I do is usually raise it up a few inches just to clean the front wheel or maybe remove the front wheel. I'm going to try that. I will test that. And I, I don't see that there's going to be an issue with that. But using a standard motorcycle lift with this installed, um, if any of you have done that yet or tested it, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm sure our other viewers would love to know. Uh, so that's basically my review at this point. I have not ridden with it uh, long term, obviously, but uh, I will and I will update you. And when I, when I do my first oil change and attempt to get to that rear bolt with the bracket installed, I'll update you probably in one of my motor vlogs. I'll let you know. Uh, whether or not I was able to get to that rear drain plug. And I'll also update you in a motor vlog if, and Max, feel free to comment also if that rear bracket can or will be modified in the future to allow better access to that. I know they did do some uh, machining on that bracket to uh, allow access to that rear drain plug, but apparently not enough. I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't really looked at it or tested it. And uh, I also want to make sure to emphasize and point out, because I forgot to at the beginning of the video, this video is not sponsored by Traction. No money exchanged hands. Uh, but Traction did send me this engine guard to test and to install and review for you. So if you want more information on this or you want to order it, you can do so through Traction's website, traction.com. Uh, I want to thank them for sending me this, and I look forward to doing some more testing on this and updating you more in the future. Now, if you liked this video, I would appreciate it if you take a second to click that little like button. And it really does help our rankings with YouTube. And what they do is they say, well, more people that like the video, it must be valuable. So they'll, they'll distribute it out to more people uh, to view. So it helps our viewership. It helps our... Uh, just overall distribution of our videos. Thank you again for watching today, and I'll see you on the next Cruise Man's Review.